Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. The Prince George's school system is investigating a cyber attack on its network, which led to a leak of thousands of users' information. Officials are still determining the extent of the hack, but PGCPS reports that the victims of the attack are primarily employees. We need to know, is banking information affected? Will payroll, this is a pay week, so is payroll going to be affected? So those are all the questions that our members have, and they're the questions that we've sent to the administration, but we haven't received responses back yet. And while student information platforms like SchoolMax don't seem to be affected, all users, including students, will be required to reset their passwords. Those impacted by the cyber attack will be contacted over the next few days for more information about their accounts. And the Montgomery County Public School System hires a new law firm following a Washington Post report regarding one of its principals. The school district has retained Baltimore law firm Jackson Lewis to look at the allegations that Joel Beidelman committed sexual assault and bullied dozens of teachers. County Executive Mark Elrich says he wants accountability. Were there investigations or weren't there investigations? Did they, were they adequate? You know, obviously they didn't feel they could just get up and say we're defend our investigations, so it's troubling. I want to see the right resolution of this, and whatever it is, we need to know it, and there can't be a later story about it. It is settle this and deal with it, and if it's, it looks like it, what it does look like, there's some people need to be held accountable, because how you went through a promotion process and didn't discuss this is kind of amazing. Bidelman was promoted to the principal of Paint Branch High School this past June, but the school system placed him on extended leave last week after news reports were made public. And we are learning more about the Brandywine man who led police on a chase with a stolen ambulance on Saturday. According to WJLA, 30-year-old Darnell Caldwell has been arrested nearly a dozen char charges in three different jurisdictions just this year. He was charged in the district in the spring with allegedly fleeing the scene of accidents in a stolen Cadillac. He also faces multiple charges in Fairfax and Arlington counties. An update on the crash and shooting at Joint Base Andrews Sunday afternoon. 31-year-old Deshaun Redding of Suitland has been identified as the driver of the BMW that was allegedly chasing and firing shots at another vehicle. Redding is being charged with two counts of attempted murder, two counts of first-degree assault, and multiple weapons charges. The car that was being chased had two juveniles inside. They were hurt, but are expected to survive their injuries. Meantime, the Morningside police officer who was involved has been identified as Stephen Huddleston, who has been with the department for a year. And another round of intense storms causes damage around the DMV. Flash flood, tornado, and severe thunderstorm warnings were issued around the DMV last evening. Prince George Inns got through min with minimal damage, with, less, with local utilities reporting less than 5% of county customers experiencing power outages. But flash flooding trapped dozens of motorists and led to the death of several animals at District Dogs, a doggy daycare facility on the 600 block of Rhode Island Avenue. Six feet of water from the floods forced the collapse of a glass wall, allowing the water to build up inside, trapping pets and employees. Firefighters rescued 20 animals, but still some drowned, police say. Officials have not disclosed how many of the pets died from that flood. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. Coming up, meet the new class of young climate activists taking action right after the break. Stay tuned. As a mom of two small kids, they're always growing. And that's why Tax Free Week is so important. We can buy all their new school clothes before they go back to school. Prince George's police are seeking help in locating a missing woman. This is 43-year-old Tanya Lewis. She was last seen on the Saturday on the 3100 block of Ritchie Road in District Heights. Lewis is 5 feet 2 and 155 pounds and was last seen wearing a light-colored shirt, light blue cut-off jeans, and white and blue Jordan shoes. If you have any information on the whereabouts on Lewis, please call 301-516-5230. 
And officials have released the names of the three Maryland residents who died in a house fire last week in North Carolina's Outer Banks. They are 13-year-old Sienna Farr of Silver Spring and married couple 64-year-old Colleen Cohen and 68-year-old William Deeg of Ashton. The teen's mother and boyfriend were injured and taken to a hospital burn unit. They were all vacationing in a waterfront rental home in Kitty Hawk when the house was engulfed in flames. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Well, you know the political endorsement for County Executive Angela Also Brooks in her run for a U.S. Senate seat. This was the scene at the Silver Spring Civic Building this morning, flanked by former County Executive Ike Leggett and the candidate. U.S. Senator Chris Van Hollen explained why he thinks Also Brooks is best suited to fill the seat, the U.S. Senate seat, replacing, replacing Ben Cardin, who is not seeking another term. I've had a chance for many years now uh, to witness firsthand the steady and stellar leadership of Angela Also Brooks in both good times and in tough times. Leaders are tested during trying times, and Angela Also Brooks st steered her county through the difficult days of the pandemic with grit, with resolve, and with perseverance. She worked nonstop to provide the people of her county what they needed when they needed it. Also, Brooks faces Congressman David Trone, Montgomery County Council Member Will Gerondo, and activist Jerome Siegel. Well, climate justice is becoming a focus for young adults in Maryland. The new class of the Chesapeake Conservation and Climate Corps was introduced this morning. The program introduced in 2010 provides young people with environmental career and leadership training. It recently expanded to include higher stipends, larger cohorts, and more intentional climate change work. The expansion was possible thanks to a new annual investment of $1.5 million from the state. The Moore Miller administration is also investing in the future, which is you, because the future is to achieve 100% clean energy by 2035. The future is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 60% by 2031 and net zero by 2045. The future is to ensure all new cars and trucks sold in Maryland are zero emission by 2035 and the future belongs to each and every one of you. The incoming class is made up of 55 core members who are matched with various host organizations across the state. Well, on tonight's segment of Grow With Us, we are talking tomatoes. Kevin Alsop of Anemus Gardens gives us tips on how to have a successful harvest. So Kevin, I'm looking behind you. There are tomatoes that were planted back in May and they look really good, but there's some issues with growing tomatoes and, and, and what are they basically for people? Um, I think one of the biggest issues is uh, blossom end rot, um, which occurs when the um, fruit, because they also occurs on uh, peppers too and other fruits, when the fruit is not getting enough nutrients to, to pr fully produce the fruit. And so that speaks of a deficiency. Talk about that a little bit. Well, that's usually associated with a calcium deficiency, but it's, it could be a number of factors, not just the calcium deficiency, um, your soil, is your soil, um, are the nutrients locked up in your soil? Because your soil could have plenty of nutrients in it, but be because of the pH being off and so forth and so on, I'm trying not to get too, too deep. But if someone's an amateur gardener, the first thing they ought to do is what? To make it sort of simplify for I them would, as a try. I would uh, add some, add a organic fertilizer with um, a nice level of calcium in it, or you can do a balanced fertilizer, but I would make sure that it has uh, a, cal a calcium and they, and they sell um, tomato and vegetable um, fertilizers that have an increase in calcium and um, make sure your watering is more consistent. Yeah, I was going to say talk about how important that is especially when it's really hot like we're having right now. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to underwater them and you don't want to overwater them so what, what should one do? Well as always you want to touch your soil. You have to touch your soil. Is your soil bone dry? If so, how, you know, stick your finger. Usually everybody's first line on their finger is an inch. So if you stick your finger down in there and it's still dry down to that inch, you want to water and you want to water deeply. Like you want to take your time and water and deeply water the bed as opposed to watering a little bit, then coming back the next day and watering it. Like you want to get a deep water. And this way you want to, you can probably keep it to every other day. It depends, and it depends on what you're growing in pots, beds. It, it's a lot of factors. So, if someone has yellowing leaves, what does that indicate? Well, that can indicate overwatering or underwatering. So, 
you, that once again, you have to know what your, what your uh, water schedule was. Has it been raining? You know, how much has been raining? It's just so many different factors. You got to pay attention to what's going on, what the effect of watering does, what the effect of fertilizer does, and how the fruit or vegetables react to what you're doing. Right. So you want to just make sure you do your research. Um, always read your labels, read your fertilizer labels. How much should I add to this? How much fertilizer do I need to add? How is the, the fruit responding? Well, let me ask this question. The one in your hand with the blossom end rot. Blossom end rot. Mm -hmm. Should that be pulled off of the off of the? Yeah, yeah. It definitely should be pulled off and. Realistically, you can cut, cut the, the, the rotten part off and still eat the rest of the tomato. But you don't want to leave that on the vine? No, you want to take it off the vine. Okay. You want to take it. And, and one thing you can do until you cure that blossom and rot, if you start to see tomatoes, and say this one is not quite ripe, say this one, this is even better. It's not fully ripe yet, and you're dealing with a blossom and rot issue, go ahead on and take it off and sit it on your counter and let it ripen up you know, until you correct your, um, your issues. Okay, Kevin, I'll stop in this garden. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. And if you have any questions for Al Sop, email him at the address on your screen. And stay right there. We'll be back in just a bit with Sports News. I got a call from some scammer who had the nerve to ask for my Medicare number. I was not born yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> When someone asked for my Medicare number in a text, I knew it was a scam. Nice catch. And your mother knew it wasn't a real email. Go, Mom. I don't share my Medicare number with strangers. If you get a call, text, or email Strike. asking for your Medicare or personal information, delete. Shut it down. Nope. Learn more at Medicare.gov slash fraud. In sports tonight, Emmanuel Forbes, a cornerback taken by the commanders in the first round of this year's NFL draft, doesn't let his size stop him from being physical. And that was shown in last Friday's preseason game against the Cleveland Browns when he made a nice tackle to prevent them from scoring. Head coach Ron Rivera spoke yesterday about the Mississippi State product and the level of physicality he brings to the game. I think the biggest thing, more thing else, is, you know, he, he doesn't play to that size. You know, he, he plays fast, he plays with his hands, plays with his eyes. Um, you know, he came in, he, in, he took a nice angle and got himself in on the tackle. So to me, it's just, he's gonna go out and do what he's done. You know, we played in the SEC and he played there for uh, three good years and, and did some really good things. And sticking with the Commanders, the team will be facing off against Baltimore Ravens in joint practices this week. The two teams don't play against each other often, so head coach Rivera believes this is a good opportunity for his team to develop. And, you know, this is not, we're not doing this for any, any position specific, JP. We're doing this for everybody. Um, now, do I, do I want to see some, some specific groups, you know, step it up, be better than they were the other night? Absolutely, absolutely. And some individuals as well, because it'd be a good chance to develop because, you know, other than watching them on tape, we haven't practiced against them. We haven't played against them yet. So, you know, we'll have tape from their game last uh, the other night. But the biggest thing our guys got to understand, you know, is that is that this is a chance to do a little studying, a little preparing, and then going out there and competing against a, a, a very good football team. In more NFL news, former Baltimore Ravens running back Alex Collins has passed away. He was tragically killed in a motorcycle crash in his home state of Florida on Sunday night. Collins played in the NFL for five seasons and was just 28 years old. And wrapping up your Tuesday sports page, the Washington Nationals will try and extend their winning streak to four games as they take the diamond against the Boston Red Sox tonight at 7.05. Switching to the birds, the Baltimore Orioles came away with a win last night, beating the San Diego Padres 4-1. And the two teams will face off again tonight at 9.40. And that's our news tonight. I'm Byron Scott. See you tomorrow night. Good night. Medicaid or CHIP coverage? Healthcare.gov is here for you. Where can we find a low-cost health plan? What about a plan that covers doctor visits? Emergency care? Prescriptions? With the new law, four out of five customers can find a plan for $10 or less per month with financial help. Healthcare.gov is here for you. Enroll today for coverage starting the first of next month. What's the website again? Healthcare.gov.